Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, you're all having a good Wednesday night tonight. This is KZFR 90.1, and this is Riding on Air. Uh, my usual co-host isn't here today, so I have Sierra. How are you doing, Sierra? Hi, pretty good. She has been on the show a few times, I think. Probably like six or seven. Yeah, a couple times. And uh, submitted some stuff and whatnot. And today, we actually have a special guest. This is uh, Dano with us today. Hey, Kevin. How are, you? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really well. It's, it's a beautiful day. It is wonderful. And you have your own show and stuff, right? I do. I'm a programmer with KZFR. I have been for about eight years, and I am one of the programmers on All Mixed Up Saturday nights, 5 to 7.30. Oh, boy. We'll plug that a few times throughout the show. Please. Yeah. So this is Writing on Air. You can submit to me uh, short stories, flash fiction, anything. We're going to have some poetry tonight um, at write.onair at gmail.com. That's W-R-I-T-E dot onair at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube page, um, YouTube page, YouTube link, uh, and my email. So please do submit. You guys make the show. You guys are what I'm here for, pretty much. I've, yeah. I've said many times before that we are the picture frame, and you guys are what is in the picture. So, yeah. All right, well, let's dive into your first piece today. What do we got? Okay, um, I've written a few poems just uh, very recently in the past couple weeks, and... Um, First one I'm going to read is called Bus Driver. Oh, okay. Brown skin, but perhaps not beautiful, yet somehow Buddha-like, behind the wheel on a rainy Friday. We are rolling towards Sacramento and already owe him a debt of gratitude. Yes, it's a job, and we are running a bit late because of the weather and traffic. It's a mess. So he says on his radio, Marysville with 12. We're a quiet dozen, all trusting or hoping, some sleeping. Roseville exit half a mile, and the old damp earth with luck will grant us passage. Man, I love that. That is so good. <laughs> That's like a... Um... Uh, I forget the term for it. Like, I guess an homage to like ships, like captains of ships way back in the day when they're completely in control of the elements. They can do nothing. They're just like, I'm doing the best I can. I'm mm -hmm. piling in all these people. We're going to give it a go. But Yeah, and it wasn't a happen. horrible storm, but it was raining, and yeah. he felt a little stressed, and everybody on the bus heard his announcement to whoever it was on the other end of the radio, and so we all just kind of got quiet. Yeah. <laughs> the best part, the best line that I like in that is the Buddha-like. Yeah, I like. love that. Yeah, that's so interesting. We were just talking about bus experiences. Yeah, yeah. That's such a relatable, like, just human thing. I like how you put it into such artistic words. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. So that was an actual uh, experience you had then? Yeah, that okay. was last Friday, the oh, 25th wow. of May. And I was just going to the Bay Area to visit my sister. And Amtrak has this pretty cool thing where you can put your bike on their bus, go to Sacramento, and then get on the train and take that down to Emeryville. Wow. And uh, I like train travel. Bus travel isn't quite as romantic, but it's still cool. <laughs> yeah, and treat your bus drivers like they're Buddha-like, please. Absolutely. <laughs> their life, uh, your life is in their <laughs> hands. 100%. And the well-being of your trip. Mm -hmm. You want to have a good time. <laughs> okay, well, let's keep plugging along to the second one then. Okay. Um, uh, I'm just seeing now that there's a bit of a correlation, mm. but um, I'll leave that to, uh, to you and our listeners. This poem is called, What About White? It's not even a color. Supposedly stainless or pure. Cleanliness is next to godliness. What about pure black? But no, all this talk, all these colorful terms become quickly absurd when applied to the skin of humans. As we evolve and commingle, they dissolve into memory and into abstraction. Is yellow, yellow? Red, red? Any artist can tell you every color has a story to tell, except white. White is a blank canvas seeking a shadow. White is an empty page. Oh, man. That's really perfect for writing on air. Like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good. I just watched a, um, a video recently on uh, um, identifying colors. And there was actually a, a pretty strong theory, and not really theory, I guess it's been proven, that white, um, or every color is just a different shade of white, 
pretty much. So okay. there's a different, yeah, even black is a shade of white because if you, if you contrast them in different ways, you eventually can boil them down to just that one wavelength pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was on the video. Yeah. I'm recalling it differently, but it's a really interesting theory. But I love that white for us in our human perspective is fresh and yeah. clean, new, it's like a page. Mm -hmm. like that's the yeah. best way to put that. Well, um, I just recently read um, Ta-Nehisi Coates' uh, book, gosh, and the name is escaping me at the moment, but in that book he says, um, white is not a race. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and then there was a comedian I heard recently saying, come on, let's face it, we're all beige. We're all shades <laughs> of beige. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a sexy color, but unless you're, you know, really purely African, black, black, white doesn't really exist. We're, wow. we're beige. Yeah. yeah. So just wanted to have a little bit of fun with that. Want to, you know, have some uh, social commentary and yeah. just th uh, food for thought. What relevancy for today of all yeah. times. Yeah, no kidding. You were at, uh, we had a KZFR show um, a few days ago. I think it was on, uh, I believe, Friday evening or something. The mm -hmm. Dan and Greeninger, Diane and Greeninger show. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they had a song about that, actually. That was their, uh, I don't know if you came later or after that. I was that. a little bit later. Yeah, they had a song that was a, a thank you to immigrants, pretty much. Mm. Because the, the main, yeah, the immigrant workers, the main lead singer had uh, his grandparents were Italian and were treated very poorly when they came to America. And he said, we all have such short-term memories that like, we don't even remember our grandparents' generation were immigrants and were treated just as bad as we're treating these people now. Yeah. So think about that. Like, yeah. We're all the same. So that's, that's a very poignant piece. Yeah. Very, Thanks. Very good. Yeah. It sure feels that way. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, um, you know, we'll reconsider our terminology. Yeah. It, it can be kind of loaded. Yep. Yeah. Like a gun. We're not going to go into the gun aspect. I'm not. That's the, let's do that'll, this course. That'll be somewhere another else. show, another poem. <laughs> yep. So you've got another one for us? I do. And right. uh, I'm kind of staying political, but it's, but it's not just politics. This particular one is called Country Walls. Frost said fences make good neighbors, but he was a gentleman. And a fence is not a wall. Insults and arrogance are never neighborly. Truth and respect are always stronger and longer lasting than bricks and mortar, bad blood and bullying over payment. But this is not about being neighborly or nice or about um, in, no, <laughs> is not about being neighborly or nice as much as about being powerful and threatening toward those with less. The opposite of charity, love thy neighbor as thyself. Imagine Jesus at the border in sandals facing the poor, hungry families and heavily armed centurions. Wow. <laughs> oh, that one ties into the last piece for sure. Yeah. I like that imagery a lot. I think people forget that Jesus wasn't white. He really was an immigrant. He was a... Was he? Yeah, yeah. he was Middle sense. Eastern. Oh, yeah. Which Those totally... folks are generally pretty swarthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that could just like link to the last piece perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> just continue in one piece. <laughs> man. Well, that's all I've got, but. Um... No, that's right, that's right. Usually towards like middle end, and we're pretty early on in the show still, we kind of go back and just recapitulate. I think I can use that term. It's more geared towards music, but I like to interchange it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and just kind of refresh the topics that we've talked about and like highlight main themes that are kind of like similar in all of them. And I think for yours, um, you're similar to my writing style, which is really humanistic is the mm -hmm. best way to put it. Like touching the parts that make us all kind of link together. Everyone on a bus, mm -hmm. behind a bus driver. We're all in the same boat. We're all here just kind of experiencing it. And then people looking at different colors and seeing that there's a diversity here, but really like they're all kind of the same. There's, there's like flavor within the meal, but everyone has to eat this. It's all there. It's the exact same thing. So don't, don't be like putting one above the other and stuff like that. And this last one, I mean, referencing Jesus and what would he be doing to our immigrants? Like that's mm -hmm. all speaking of like a human condition yeah. to me. Yeah, that's well said, I Kevin. I, I, I appreciate that perspective. I'd like to hear some of your stuff one of yeah. these days. Yeah, I actually have done a few pieces on here um, and mine usually kind of touch the same thing. Like mm -hmm. we are all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the stuff going on now politically has been wild and crazy for whatever side you are, are rallying for or going for. And it's, it's usually pretty dehumanizing mm -hmm. to the people that are like on either side and even to one side to the other side, they dehumanize yeah. their fellow man. And it's mm -hmm. like, 
we're all the same. Like there's mm -hmm. different flavors, there's different shades, and there's different things that we can really adhere to, but we are the same. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that we focus more on our differences and that's kind of destructive to any, any uh, yes. real communication if we focused instead on our similarities. What do we have in common? We are all human and therefore we need to eat. Does everyone have food? Does everyone have shelter? Well, if not, can we do something about that? Yep. Can we compromise? I mean, I'm married. I've been very fortunate to have a wonderful woman in my life for um, 15 years, give or take. And um, <laughs> thank you. And uh, any relationship has is, is got to be built on compromise and trust and respect. And that extends to our neighbors. Uh, the next country over, um, I think, is, is the same thing. Yep. Absolutely. I was throwing my hands up and like, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've often told a lot of my friends how much stronger bonds made from similarities are than differences mm -hmm. in almost any interaction. I mean, there's things to be said for like my en friend of my enemy or whatever that saying is. Yeah. Enemy. I can't remember it, but <laughs> if you're unifying towards a common enemy, yes, that can be bonding. But I mean, if you're unifying because there's something you both are interested in, or both can go, wow, I have the same thing. My mom says this too, and your mom says this. And that is so much more stabilizing, functional, relaxing, easy. And it's, it's so often overlooked to look for the differences and yeah. it kills me. Yeah. It just drives me nuts. Cause we're always, or look for the similarities. We're always pointing out the differences. Mm -hmm. And even in school, when I was, uh, taking my English courses at, um, an older school back in high school, I noticed it was geared towards finding differences in writings, not similarities. And that killed me. And I pointed it out to many of my teachers. I was like, why are we constantly looking for the juxtaposition? Like what the differences are in these things? Why can't we find the similarities between them? And they were like, well, it's too easy. That's fine. Look for the differences. And I was like, too easy? But they're the same, like, what are you talking about? And so I always was frustrated with my English courses. Um, but I passed them nonetheless. <laughs> and so I have a radio show about English now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely similarities are what I would always plug into. Um, there's, there's a little poem that's, that's bouncing around in my head. I think Langston Hughes may have written it and you're nodding your head, uh, Sierra. <laughs> I'm going to paraphrase here. And if I mangle it, if you know it better than I, please step in. But there's something, uh, the poem is very brief. It's like three lines and it says, it's hard to imagine that poetry could save your life, but men die miserably every day for lack of what can be found there. Now I, yeah. now, I probably mangled it, but I think we got the, the essence the of gist, it, yeah. that poetry is a simple thing. Yes. It can be five lines. It can be 20 lines. It can be a lot longer, but hopefully in a short period of time and just a handful of words, you can get something across that touches something inside you that's important. Yeah, and I wanted to say something that I like about your style that I've noticed is just how it's kind of just a sequence of your own thoughts. Like mm -hmm. we, we don't have a, like a ton of, you know, I, I don't know, uh, literary devices or, you know, mm -hmm. rhyming or anything, but it's just, it's impactful because it's to the point and it's basically you writing down your experiences when you're on a bus, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like those. Those are relatable and I think enriching. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I've, I've written a lot of different styles. I, I probably was initially influenced by uh, Dr. Seuss, and then E. E. Cummings, and then the Romantic poets, and then eventually T. S. Eliot. Once I started thinking of myself as an intellectual, but um, <laughs> mostly I want poetry to to touch emotion. Yeah, because that's where I think we are really getting something done. I have a question. Yeah. If, if for for the people who want to start being influenced by poets or want to start getting into poetry, what, who who would you recommend to go to first? Well, I think start simple because yeah. poetry can get really uh, complicated really quickly, and don't hold yourself to some high standard that you have to analyze it. Just read something that makes you feel good. E. e. Cummings to me was he was very simple. He didn't uh, capitalize, he yeah. didn't really punctuate, and, and his poetry was kind of whimsical. Um, Robert Frost, as I uh, referenced in one of my poems, is a very sort of nature-oriented uh, poem in a very traditional um, Americana style. Um, I mean, there are millions of different kinds of, of poets, uh, and I would say just start simple with something that just gives you a feeling. Yeah. 
and then you can build up from there. And certainly, I mean, T.S. Eliot is kind of ridiculous because he's so dense. Mm, yeah. And one poem can take an entire book, and you basically have to analyze every page before you can go on to the next one if it's going to make any sense. Wow. So start simple um, and just make it enjoyable. Don't make it a, a struggle. Make it something that's fun, something that puts a smile on your face. And as you get a little bit more uh, comfortable, you can challenge yourself to poetry that's you know, maybe deeper yeah. or more challenging in some way. I think my intro poet that I kind of like segued into and really opened up the world to me was uh, Charles Bukowski. Oh, Bukowski. Read him. Oh, many. He doesn't pull his punches. Mm -mm. He's very much just like, this is the world. This is what it is. There, most of his books actually picture him on the front cover with a giant cigar in his mouth. <laughs> right. So that, that gives you a kind of an image of what his poetry is like. It's very much like how he looks. Very raw, very blunt, very kind of, to the quick mm -hmm. and he doesn't pull his punches and to me that was hilarious and also tragic in a lot of ways and sure. there was just so many emotions that he could get out from just being raw mm -hmm. he never tried to make some veiled illusion he was always like this is how it is this is how i see it and this is what's happening move on yeah and it was just very almost cathartic and just re relaxing for me to read it mm -hmm. and like you said don't go into it looking to be like, oh, I'm going to analyze the highest level of this and get to understand all these, like the I am to the uh, pentameter or whatever it is, mm -hmm. the whole like uh, cadence and all that stuff. Don't worry about that. It's, it's, it's enjoyment. That's yeah. the reason why these people are writing it. They wanted to get a point across and they wanted to talk about something they had on their mind. So read it first for that and go, wow, I just, I want to experience their experience with them. That's mm -hmm. all you're looking for. And usually at this point in the show, I like to segue as well. If you're trying to get into writing, definitely do so <laughs> yeah this is i mean you wrote the one of your poems or at least uh shortly after for about a bus yeah a small experience you were just on a bus for a few minutes i thought yeah. this would be a good poem yeah it doesn't need to be hours of work it can be if you're mm. trying to write a book and there's there's diligence and you want things to connect like you can put whatever you want into it but it doesn't have to be draining yeah it can be relaxing it can be therapeutic and and that's something i encourage anyone who wants to try it you can just pick it up a piece of paper right now and yeah. write something. Well, and I love that Hughes quote because it's, I, I just love, I mean, it's tragic. The idea of someone, they, they collapse because they don't have poetry. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they don't have that outlet for their emotions and maybe they're not in touch with them. And so that's their demise. So, I mean, poetry really can save you. Yeah. Um, and I think anything is poetry. I mean, I don't, do you know Rupi Kaur? She's really, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but okay. she's like this really po uh, popular poet right now. And her poetry is like three lines sometimes. Okay. Like it's, it's just the smallest thing, but it's, it can be beautiful and super relatable. And so just don't be afraid to start writing and submit. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Go with submit. You. Nudge, nudge. Sure. <laughs> submit to the show and yeah. um, go to a bookstore. Go to the poetry section yes. of the bookstore. Just pick up a book. Read, you know, it's a, one poem from it. If that doesn't speak to you, put it back on the mm -hmm. shelf and grab another book. There's going to be one pretty quickly that'll speak to you. Yep. And um, and it's a and it's an amazing thing when it does because it's just you know images on on paper. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, some letters and words and sentences, maybe not even sentences. Yeah. And it, it may bring you to tears. It may make you mad. It may, it, hopefully it'll stir some sort of emotion. Yeah. It's poetry should, I think. And don't let anyone ever tell you that there is one way better than the other. If you Thank want you. to write in half sentences or one words, do it. I had, and I was on the phone, I wasn't texting when I promised, I was looking up a poem from my high school that drove me nuts when we had mm -hmm. to analyze it. It was an AP Lit class, and uh, my teacher actually wrote her, I think it was, she's going to kill me if she's listening, um, I think she had this somehow involved in her master's thesis. And the poem, I'm going to read it for you, it's by William Carlos Williams, um, okay. it's called The Red Wheelbarrow. It is, uh, I think, 16 words in total. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow, glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. And my teacher wrote <laughs> a master's thesis on this. Ah, We're great. talking about a thick book mm -hmm. of analyzation and discussion. <laughs> on 16 words. <laughs> on 16 words. Yeah. And to me, that was baffling when she brought her thesis and was like, look, because I think at the time she had us analyze this. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and went, this is a load of, I ain't, I mean, there's no way, I don't know, this is 16 words, what are we talking about? 
and all the students missed the point of, the, the, of this piece. And she came back in the next day and slammed down her thesis and went, look, you can do, if I can do a thesis on this, you can write to me like a short, like two, three page essay on the meaning of this. I pulled out so much and all of us were, couldn't even fathom what she meant by that. But any level, any um, amount of poetry can, can carry weight with it a lot of weight and it can carry emotion and it can be descriptive, it can be ambiguous, it can be anything. I err towards for my writing um, more kind of like puzzly where you have to kind of read into it and go, what are you, what are you saying by not saying something? Mm. Like, what does this mean? Let me read a little bit more. So you have to read over my stuff a few times. Other people I know are explicit and to the point. Charles Bukowski mm -hmm. is one example I can think of who is what he's saying is what he's meaning. Very rarely is it there's more you have to read into it. If he says, I don't like this, he doesn't like it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, another thing that I like about poetry is that you can interpret it in many different ways. And sometimes what the, like, the author's meaning for it is not exactly what you get from it. You can get lots of things like this short 16-word poem meant so much to your teacher, not much to you. But, I mean, if you dig in deeper, you can find anything. And that's what's awesome about language, I think, is just how much stuff there is. There's so much context. There's, every word has a billion different connotations. So it's just a blast analyzing this stuff. And yeah. And uh, appreciating it. Even if you say, oh, I don't like that poem, well, then say, okay, why don't you like it? Mm. Yep. You know, if it's, if it's too short or if there's something in the imagery that doesn't click with you, if you start focusing on it, you might start appreciating it. Yeah. And uh, William Carlos Williams is famous for doing a lot with very few words. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate that. That's, that's, that was a great... Uh, yeah. And I think okay. that one was actually about his daughter having cancer or something. I, I forget. It, it had a really intense, uh, intense backstory that I remember. But I love that you pointed out how there's so many different connotations for words. Because in my mind, when I read a piece and when I write a piece... I like to get something across, but I like even more so when what I'm trying to get across does not get through and I can see what they're mm. imposing on me. That because to cool. me, that's the perspective of their worldview. That's what they have in their mind. So I get to learn about them through them reading my piece, even if they completely miss the point that I was trying to get across. Totally fine for me. So I look at that and go, wow, this is, if you want to look at the world, the universe is this puzzle, and we're all trying to figure out how to put it together, I can see someone else's piece. And that is, that is the most beautiful thing oh, wow. for writing, in, in my opinion. When someone yeah. sees something that I've created and takes it a completely different way and runs with it, mm -hmm. that's magnificent. Well, and there's just a plethora of different, like, people perceive life differently. And so reading other people's poetry and seeing what, they, what their intention was is a glimpse into their, into, through their eyes, which I think is really unique and great. Again, um, a commonality. Mm-hmm. It's the same poem, and different people reading that poem differently can bring something to the other person who can say, yes. oh, I got this from it, but I really like what you got from it. And just by sharing this handful of words, you can find a new commonality that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Yeah, uh, it's funny, actually. One time I submitted a poem uh, to Writing On Air, and it was about a friendship betrayal and so I used kind of an analogy of um, Brutus and Caesar um, and w and when I was listening to it on the radio being read by Brandon and Kevin they both took it very literally they thought it was a poem about Caesar and they were like well it's interesting that she chose to do like a historical poem but I was like no 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 <laughs> <laughs> but but see it can just go so many different directions and I think that was so cool I was like well maybe to some people I was all writing about Caesar and stuff which is cool but yeah it's just so many different ways you could perceive a poem. So love yeah. that. If the wheelbarrow can, mm. you know, be a metaphor for a child <laughs> with cancer, yep. certainly a poem about <laughs> Caesar and Brutus can be, uh, you know, about friends or Facebook or <laughs> or yeah. calling somebody on the phone or whatever. Anything else? As long as your mind is open to it. Yeah, I had uh, I was reading a health book recently, and they entered with a quote, and this is kind of different, but I'll try to piece yeah. it together here. Um, the quote was about an old Indian story where uh, many Indian doctors, and I'm talking about like Middle East Indian, mm -hmm. Indian um, were trying to describe an elephant, and from an elephant in like a dark room or something, and all of them were able to describe a piece of it and be like, oh, this, this is what the elephant is. It, it is composed of this one kneecap and this leg and all these things, and the other one was like, no, it's this tail, it's all these things, yeah. and all of them had a piece of this picture, but none of them were right. 
And it was only until they brought it all together could they see the full picture. And so when I, when I share pieces in poetry and stuff like that, I always feel like the picture is so huge that every time someone adds to it, it just becomes more beautiful and becomes more broad and, and bigger. And, and it, every generation adds to it too, which is also baffling to me. How I can read a, po a, a poem or any type of writing, it doesn't have to be a poem, from one generation and understand what they meant for that generation but imply it to something completely different in my generation. Yeah. Wildly different. It's, that's what makes writing timeless, in my opinion. Yeah. That well said. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think also one, one thing that I like about uh, language uh, and poetry and even puzzles, because my dad was really big into puzzles, mm. um, it's something that you really don't need much to, uh, to work with poetry. You get a piece of paper and a pencil. You can use a phone, you can use a computer, you can use an iPad or whatever you want to use, but it's, it's a very simple uh, art form. It doesn't take a long time. I mean, I probably wrote most of my poetry within half an hour each. Some poems I do struggle and I go back and I change and I rewrite and it's, you know, I could say it took me a week to write it, but most of my poems kind of leap into my head and they're on the page within half an hour. It's like a picture of your one moment in your life right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So cool. And I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to paint. <laughs> yeah. So poetry works for me. That yeah, works. and I mean, if you can write, you can do it. Yeah. So I yeah. think you should just go for it. Even mm -hmm. if you can't write, if you can speak yeah. a language. Yeah, can speak, <laughs> yes. We can, there's software, people can write it for you, anything. And I just, to me, writing in words are, well, communication in general is, is the foundation of almost every aspect of humanity yeah. and so when I made the show I wanted people to write and submit so I wanted to say thank you Dan for being on the show because this has been fantastic and with our last few minutes here I want you to plug your own show and then one piece of advice to a new writer okay well first of all I want to thank you Kevin for uh, creating the, pr the program yeah. um, because it's not something that you necessarily hear a lot of on radio but um, I'm thrilled that it's there and thank you for bringing it Oh, and uh, I will be a regular listener uh, from this point on. Mm. And um, yeah, so I'm on All Mixed Up. I am generally the second Saturday of the month. This month being June, I'm going to be on uh, the 16th, which is the third Saturday. There's four of us and we sort of take turns. And if somebody has a basketball game or if they go, need to go out of town, then we will swap and move around. Um, but it's always good to listen to. There's Mark and Mike and Rafiki and myself. Um, very different tastes, but uh, always a fun program. So, what time? It's Saturdays from 5 p.m. until 7:30 p.m. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, kcfr.org. It's on the the phone app and all that good stuff. And um, I like to really mix it up. I'll play some electronica. I'll play some rock. I'll oh, play baby. some, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll play you know Tom Jones and Talking oh, Heads man. and Frank Sinatra and good all the good work. stuff. All the good stuff. <laughs> Thanks for your encouragement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, inviting me on your show, Kevin. Appreciate I it a lot. Will. And then uh, to put you on the spot, any sure. advice for someone who's just starting to write? Just don't criticize yourself. Mm -hmm. We are always our own worst critics. And just the best advice I can give is to, uh, when you're writing, just write. Just put it down and uh, try to enjoy the process. Try not to censor yourself. You can go back and change it later. Put it down on paper, look at it, a day or two later and chances are you'll be happy with it and uh, enjoy the process yes well thank you Dan thanks thank Kevin Sarah appreciate for being it here. Thank thanks you. Sarah and this has been Writing on Air at KZFR 90.1 and I hope everyone has enjoyed the show and do tune in to the next ones we're every two weeks so the next show will be two weeks from this Wednesday have a good night everyone is that Philip Glass?